Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Danella on this channel. We do a bit of lifestyle, finance and fashion videos. So if that's something you're into, go ahead and click subscribe and just keep on watching. As you can see by the title of today's video, I'll be talking about my hair loss journey. That's why your girl is wigless and my little girl is making her very first debut on the channel. So, just a quick update on what's going on. I was recently diagnosed with triple C A alopecia. To be honest, the actual meaning for that is a complete mouthful and a tongue twister. So I just insert down here what it actually stands for. So yeah, triple C A alopecia is a scarring alopecia, meaning whatever hair you've lost, you're not able to regrow it, and the scarring is permanent. So. You can't do anything about it but there are measures you can take to ensure that it doesn't get any more like you don't lose any more hair so that's what i've been doing now for the last couple months so i've been taking preventative tablets basically so just a little backstory for you guys back in 2018 and my son and after that i was experiencing hair loss but to be honest, I didn't think anything of it because I was thinking like, oh, it's first part from ear loss. That's normal. But six months later, it's still going on. So at first, I was trying to do protective ear style. To be honest, <laughs> they weren't protective ear style. It was causing more damage. So I was getting closure sewings and braids. Not a good idea. Just stop doing the braiding altogether. And then I was just wearing my natural hair in just like two little fat twists going back and at times I would do buns but to be honest I felt guilty even wearing the buns and stuff like that because my edges I could just see them going like they were just saying help <laughs> help help you know you can see like every time you comb it it just seems less and less so yeah that was my situation and at one point I was even trying to use like the eyeliner to just fill in the little bits that were missing. So I was doing that and then I couldn't keep doing it any longer so I had to start wearing wigs. I ditched my old ear stylist because to be honest the only reason I was going to her was because she was good at doing the braids and styles like that. But guys, I can't stress the importance of like going to someone that's not just good at doing the styles and all of that but like they are how do you put this they are fully informed of like your conditions and stuff like that they are like able to advise you if you're having any kind of condition they can advise you and like make suggestions so I quit the old stylist and I started going to somewhere else that was a bit closer to me just because I wanted the cornrows so I'd go to her to like get treatments and like get the little cornrows to wear underneath the wigs so on one occasion when I went to her she was saying to me like oh if I've been diagnosed so I was saying to her like what are you talking about diagnosed she's like yeah it's here here condition seems like it's getting worse and you probably need to see the GP I thought you were like on the on the, the GP referral or something like that I think she said something along that line so yeah, I'm like, no. I just thought it was related to postpartum and all of that. So I was just giving it time and try to give my hair a break. Don't like not applying that much pressure. She was like, no, you need to get it checked out. So she advised me and told me like, oh, just go to the GP and from there they'll refer you and all of that. At that time, I was getting the cornrows as I said earlier. So I didn't want to go to the GP with the cornrows in and for them to tell me like, oh, the reason why you're having this and having that is because of the ear styles you were wearing. So at that point in time, I was experiencing thinning, thinning, as I said earlier, and then my head was just a bit tender. So like anytime I touched like certain little section, it would just pain me. It was extremely, extremely tender. So I waited up to, until like took out the cornrows so you know like you like normally waste around four weeks there about so I think I wore the ear style for like a month and then after that I went to see my GP 
So the GP did refer me to the dermatologist and for that I had to wait one month. So through the referral I was able to do a scalp biopsy. <sighs> to be honest, I was so nervous to do the scalp biopsy but it had to be done because initially they thought I had lupus but when I did the blood test it came back negative for lupus so they thought I had lupus and then because I'm anemic they were saying like, oh you probably need to up your iron intake but when they did the blood test for the lupus and the iron level it was alright my iron levels were okay there was no trace of lupus or anything like that so the next option was for me to the scalp biopsy if you don't know a biopsy is just them taking a little puncture of the skin to further analyze what's going on with it so I did that and the dermatologist said like oh within two weeks they're about I would get a letter from the GP to come and remove the stitches Two weeks later, I didn't get a letter from the GP to come and remove the stitches, but I did get a letter from the dermatologist telling me to come back for a follow-up appointment. So when I saw that, I'm like, Ross, my goodness, no. Oh my goodness, I was thinking the worst. I was thinking, Lord, it's, it must be something serious. Because if it was just like a simple one-two, they could have told me over the phone, but they chose not to. So like, it's something serious. I was thinking like, oh, probably it's cancer. I was thinking the worst. I was like on Google and I like, let me tell you guys, Google can be your worst enemy at times because I, like, Google will be providing you with all sorts of information and you'll be thinking like, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. I'm having that too. <laughs> so that was me. And so yeah, I was just thinking the worst. So I got the letter and then I was thinking like, oh, why am I getting this? And I didn't get any letter or any phone call for them to remove the stitches. So I gave them a call like, what's going on? I was supposed to hear from you guys to remove the stitches and I haven't. I'm here waiting for two weeks now. So that same day they told me to come by at three. So when I went there, I was just updating him about the whole situation, telling him like, oh, I got a letter to do a follow-up appointment. In this letter, it didn't specify what the appointment was for. So by me saying all of that to him, he was able to just go into the system and check what was the result for my biopsy. So he was the one that confirmed to me that yeah, you have a triple CA alopecia. It's mostly common amongst black black women. Yeah. And basically all the symptoms I had aligned with it. So yeah. And to be honest, this type of alopecia, it has to be confirmed by biopsy. There's no other way to confirm it. So if you think you have any symptoms like this, just go ahead and try and get a biopsy done. So the symptoms associated with this is thinning of the hair and it usually starts in the crown. So let me just go ahead and show you guys what mine look like at the moment. So. It usually starts like just a small pea size and then gradually it just expands so the earlier you're able to identify it the better it is for you because as I said earlier whatever hair is lost yeah it can't grow back so at least if you find it earlier they can give you tablets to like stop it from progressing so again the symptoms are Baldness starting from the crown, tenderness, itching, and then this burning sensation from time to time. So at the moment, I'm taking doxycline for it. So they gave me doxycline just to see if it's able to halt the baldness. So I'm taking that, and then on top of that, I'm trying to do my own little natural remedy so I'm using castor oil, onion oil and I have some different type of shampoos and condition that I've been using so 
if I see that they're like actually working, working properly, I just go ahead, probably at some later time, and let you guys know about it. But so far, I must say my edges, they're coming back. They're still a bit thin, but it's growing. And then in regards to the appointment that I had in November, thanks to Rona, that was cancelled. So I'm supposed to go back in February. So fingers crossed, I'll be able to go in February. So based on what the GP was saying to me, the appointment in November, the one I should have should have gone to already, that was cancelled. Yeah. So the appointment basically was just to explain the whole situation to me and put me on some form of treatment. So given that I was even I wasn't able to go into that one and I went and see him first and he was able to explain everything to me. He did prescribe the tablets for me. So the tablets weren't prescribed by the dermatologist, they were prescribed by the GP based on his whole understanding of the situation and such. So he just said to me like, oh, just try and take these for now and when you do go to the dermatologist, at least they can track the progress to see if it's working and then if it's not working by then they can recommend something different so yeah i just keep you guys posted so until next time bye take care go ahead and subscribe comment and like <laughs>